Well, well, good afternoon for some on the West Coast. Good evening for those on the East Coast. And good day and good night to all those on the Outer East and the Outer West. My name is Troy Bernier with the Miami International Science Fiction Film Festival, day five after hours. Saturday is a late night schedule for us. And what we have for you right now is um, a very interesting lecture that came to us from Willis Wanari in Kenya. Uh, you might know that Willis Wanari in Kenya won the first uh, best Afrofuturism film. Well, this season, uh, two years later, he has sent us a lecture which goes into the concept of why he created the film and the ideology behind it all. So I'm going to share with you a small piece of the lecture. And of course, you can take it upon yourself to watch the rest of it. It's still in our queue and it'll be there available for the next couple of days for you. Um, after that short piece, well, Willis is going to join us all the way from, from Kenya and uh, fill us in on a few more details. So let's check it out. Are we talking about 60 percent? 60 percent? Are you kidding me? We saw how far we could reach when we were divided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Okay. Do you have any kind of documentation on this painting? We have just sampled how far we can reach when we are united. Think of this painting as the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. Now, we have a unique opportunity to see the full extent of what we can achieve when we combine all our efforts as the seven spheres of the new republic. I believe that this was the vision that the founders of the new republic had in mind, where the seven spheres pulled together to help a nation achieve her goals. This is what happens when you rush to become a developing self testing. Who do these kids of guys think they are? Now, fellow Kenyans, join me as we usher in this new vision. Hi, my name is Willis, and uh, I'm an executive producer for a film called Kitambo. Um, and Kitambo was a film that uh, actually won the first Afrofuturism uh, Film Award, Best Afrofuturism Film Award at the Miami International Sci-Fi Film Festival in edition six, back in 2019. And um, it was a great honor for us. Uh, we were really happy. It was our first best of anything to win as a film, and um, the Kitambo was actually produced as a short proof of concept, because we were thinking uh, we ha we've not done so many sci-fi here. There are a couple have been done, but not so many. And we, as a team, had a big project, big idea uh, to shoot, which was called Sayari 47i1. It's a story I'd written back in 2012. And the idea of this story was we were trying to see, it was a story about Kenya, space exploration, and and you know, traveling to a different planet, and Sayari means planet, so planet 47 I won, and, and um, so there's a lot of stuff I had written during that story, and in the concept or manuscript for the story, I had a concept called the seven spheres of society. Now, these seven spheres of society is something I had uh, learned in my Christian journey, uh, and it is something, it's a concept that was actually, um, I think when you look at it first mentioned, I think, during the Campus Crusade back in 1970s, there was something called Campus Crusade. 
and it was talking about the seven nations that uh, uh, we want to to preach to or to reach out to. And this concept of segmenting the society uh, into certain verticals or uh, spheres or pillars, or nations or mountains, those are the words that have been used uh, here. It could be seven, six, you know, just around that number uh, is, is something that is also used in business, for example. Business have verticals. I have worked for the last 15 years in um, IT business, and we had to do segmentation. For example, my first role was a, as a telecom account manager. So I was going to uh, handle the telcos. We had someone else dealing with banking, someone else dealing with either manufacturing or something else. And every organization I went to, most often we had that segmentation. For example, when I worked for a telco now, Telcom Kenya, they also had that. We had uh, separated fast as two big groups. Uh, there's what you call the consumer market or mass market. Then you have the B2B or business to business market or enterprise sales. And in this enterprise sale, we split it again into two into corporate sales. And we had SME, small, medium uh, enterprises uh, market. That Then within the corporate, we now again split it into public sector, private sector. Within private sector, you had uh, manufacturing, banking, all those things. So you had account managers, an account manager running through, uh, selling to banks, uh, a team selling to the government. And so it's a way to uh, be able to reach uh, the society in terms of, you're saying, uh, for example, banks, financial institutions, the bank, it's called BFSI, banking and financial services institutions. They consume certain things very differently from how manufacturing would consume it or government. Would. So if you're going to create a strategy about how you're going to reach government, for example, you would need to have created that particular product or speak a language that that sector understands. So it's the same thing when, when, when these campus crusaders were looking and they were saying, we need to reach out to this, what they're calling nations. And if you have to reach to them and you call it the marketplace, you need to speak a language that that marketplace understands. Uh, so this is now the spheres of society. All right, this is the spheres of society. How you doing, Willis? I'm doing well, uh, Troy. How have you been? All right, Thank man. It's, uh, it's been quite a many months. Quite a many months. Yes. Good to see you. Good Same to see you. Me. So uh, tell us a little bit more about um, how does this, another way of how does how does Daddy? this work? Daddy, mama wants you. <laughs> okay. It's always a um, best time. Um, 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 when you, um. Can you I think, um... Hi, pass my regards. <laughs> yeah, so, well, the spheres of society, for us, as I said, the, the whole idea is something that is very common in, um, in, 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 in the world. Uh, we segment society based on uh, uh, different segments that we would want or sectors that we feel we want to reach out. And um, the way it's being used in our film, our short film, Kitambo, is we look at um, we look at society as being segmented. Um, currently, as I uh, mentioned, if you watch the actual lecture, I talk about how you know uh, Kenya we have forty two tribes, and from the forty two tribes, um, it's how normally we look at our society. But uh, we revisioned um, a society in the future, which is now segmented based on these uh, seven spheres. And the whole idea of these seven spheres is because we are considering a merit-based approach to getting leadership or to uh, building society. So we're saying instead of us viewing ourselves as tribes, which uh, if soon enough we are foreseeing a situation where because of a lot of intermarriage that is happening, uh, the tribal influence will reduce. But we are saying we start uh, looking at ourselves based on these seven spheres. Uh, and uh, to get into to, to the seven spheres, you have to prove yourself. For example, mm -hmm. if you're going to be, uh, uh, to be a scientist, obviously you have to prove yourself 
uh, to get to that level of being a scientist or if you want to be in the religious sphere, you have to prove yourself. Uh, and once you prove yourself into that sphere, then you work towards uh, doing everything to build society. So everything is worked towards a common goal, though you're segmented, but you have a common goal and a common vision. When we look at ourselves based on tribes, it's very individual. It's very, you know, our tribe first, I will employ my tribe mate or stuff like that, which uh, doesn't help society in general, you know. But once right. you look at a, a segmented uh, approach where we say, uh, I mean, right now those segments exist. It's only that they're not defined uh, as a general thing in the society. Um, and we are not saying that's a society we are hoping to come up with, but for the purpose of our story, it does help us uh, when we look at it this way and we say, you know, things have gone because of tribal, um, you know, we've had clashes in the past and stuff like that that have affected our society. We're saying we revision, you know, we, 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 we say, uh, there's challenges that is coming out of this view of ourselves as tribes. But if we did uh, look at ourselves in terms of these uh, sectors, then we can actually uh, be able to to build uh, better societies. So that's how we're looking at it. Yeah. So I think there's a lot more details that you can get once you go into the lecture. You can uh, be able to appreciate uh, more yeah. the influence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The lecture goes into considerable detail. This was just a yeah. fragment of it. Um, so as far as the film is concerned, um, you envisioned all of these things in, in, in place and, or should I say in harmony, all these yes. efforts in, in a harmony, harmony, which allows the people to, uh, build upon a much more advanced civilization in yes. rapid, in rapid pace, at rapid yes. pace, yes. uh, yes. where, and of course, folks, you, you have to, you know, check out the film too. That's a separate segment. So I'm not going to give it all away, but in the in the film, uh, uh, what year was it set? Twenty. Uh, so the the the, the, the current uh, in, in, in the present in the film is 2060. It's actually around in the 2060s, and in yeah. the 2060s, um, due to Kenya's geographic location, it made it uh, uh, very easy to get ships into into space. Yes. So that is what also helped um, boost the space industries um, yes. uh, in Kenya alongside of the, the massive efforts of, of synchronizing the society with these seven different uh, uh, approaches. So I, I think that's, that's quite nice. Could you, yes. can you elaborate yes. a little bit on um, how, uh, how this has presented itself with you know how this message has presented itself with some of the other festivals that you have encountered. Uh, well, uh, we started as I mentioned even in the beginning of the segment you played is uh, our first um, best of anything. We got it from Miami uh, Film Festival. We had uh, taken it to several festivals beforehand, and the good thing with you know if you know about film, I mean Film Freeway. Uh, once you put your Film there, you can always keep improving on it as you take it to festival. So as you would get feedback, we'd keep improving on it. And immediately we, uh, when I, it was actually my first festival to attend, uh, the Miami festival was the first one. And you know, being there, meeting all these great filmmakers, I got a lot of feedback, uh, and, you know, positive criticism that I went back and also just watching films that were done in those three days or four, I think it was four days we were there. Uh, when I got back, you know, I watched my film, I remember the big screen and I felt, oh, I need to change a lot of things. So I came <laughs> back, fixed a lot of, tried to fix, uh, I, you know, up to the right. level I could because there's right. only so much you can do. Right. And then I threw it back out there. And so it started getting picked up uh, a few by a few more festivals. The Columbus uh, Black International Film Festival picked it up. Um, where, were, where were they? Columbus, Ohio. Uh, oh, in Columbus, Ohio. Yes. And then um, the other film festival that uh, picked it up was the um, Urban Media Makers uh, uh, Film Festival, which is... Urban Media Makers. Okay. Yes, yes. In, 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 the, in their 18th edition. And um, there we won a Best Afrofuturism Film from Africa uh, Film Award. And then um, also locally, uh, we have a film festival, uh, not a film festival, but uh, like an awards uh, uh, um, Film Award um, uh, 
called Kalasha Film uh, and TV Award. And we won um, actually this particular. <laughs> oh, Brent, uh, let, let us see it. Let us see it. Yes. Uh, so we won. Uh, for, oh. This is. Um, it's it's called the best. Uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly. I think there's a bit of a reflection it's there. Clear. Yeah. So we best special effects uh, at the Kalasha in 2019. So that year was a great year for us. We got a couple of uh, great uh, awards. And I think for me, it was a lot more to do with the feedback that we got. And in every festival we went or we put it out to, uh, we received, um, you know, it, we won a couple of, uh, uh, it's called uh, Awards of Merit uh, and then Awards of Recognition across different uh, festivals. So we did well. Uh, and the film, to be honest, was not put out to be, uh, we were not even planning initially to take it to festivals. You know, we we're doing a proof of concept that we, we were challenging ourselves. Can, is it possible to actually do this? And then someone said, why don't you just put it out to festivals and see what how it um, goes? And and so, right. so we are grateful and we are happy. And uh, the um, I don't know if you can see it. It's up there. <laughs> I still have it. <laughs> the, Let us see. Let us see. Uh, so well, it's kind of locked. It will be a whole process getting it out. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, I see so, that. Oh, that's the award. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, the Best Afrofuturism yes. Film Award from uh, Miami. Yes. So that, that was for us a big, big, big... Um, I, I know the team really, really loved it. And considering we got three awards, uh, also one for Best Supporting actor for Dan Othieno and um, and also the Beacon Award for being the first uh, Kenyan film there. So uh, all those were very um, important for us and we appreciate the festival. That's why we love. Yeah, no, awesome. awesome. Um, we have a little message here from someone that you may remember. Okay. Greg Lucy. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's watching, he's watching and he's, he's gone. So uh, hi to Greg, say hi to yeah, Greg. Hey. Hi, Greg. Hi, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> Long time. Folks, uh, Greg, I guess uh, I guess he's in California or something. Yeah. But yeah. yeah no, that, that's what I'm saying. It was great meeting filmmakers, great actors. Uh, I mean, that year, I well. want to say that year was around 80 films, and we had somewhere around 35 films represented. Um, yes. So a lot of people from different countries came out, which was nice. Which was nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, as far as the uh, the, the how how do you see um, the industry of Kenya is uh, uh, the space industry? How do you see the space industry there? Is there any any activity going on with the space industry? Yeah. So, like in well, how we address it also in the film, it was really uh, interesting because there are many people who did not know the history uh, that we did mention in the film about 1964. And uh, Luigi uh, Brogli, um, um, you know, space spot that is in a town called Malindi off the shores. And uh, it, it was established there in 1964 by the Italians mm -hmm. and uh, also NASA. And they used to launch uh, rockets from there. And it's, it's a history that is not, you know, like the, I know there are complaints in the US about certain parts of history not being well taught. This is one thing we didn't learn in uh, in our history books for for some reason i i actually visited that site once and um and and we've actually been in this in the space uh, been involved in you know astronomy yeah. and space right. since then and um and actually very recently the university of nairobi actually launched um it was a, 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 a satellite a small satellite box um that uh, was i think they actually launched it was it in the us uh so we have something that we already, uh, yeah. the future is still there. There's a lot of talk, uh, not only in Kenya, but across Africa. There's a lot of uh, uh, space exploration growing. It will take yeah. time, but uh, yeah, we're on, on yeah. the journey already. So it's, it seemed far-fetched when you wrote the yeah. story, but it's actually... They're called there. small, um, those small satellites you're speaking of, they're called small sats. Yes, yes, they're, yes. They're called yes. small sats, and, and they can do a myriad of things depending on what they're designed for. They're, yeah. they're not designed for many, many different functions, but yes. um, but typically they can do things such as measure measure um, uh, infrared, you know, some photography or yes. radio telemetry type stuff they'll use to measure what's going on with the atmospheric layer. 
um, and other things too. But uh, they usually they do, they usually typically do not have many different functions. The good thing about it is that you're able to put a a probe in low Earth orbit, yeah. or further. You know, someone I think is I, I read a paper uh, a year ago where they were sending some of these things to the moon uh, to do some additional surveying on the moon. So it depends on the application and the type of instrumentation and how much money, of course, you really want to spend. Yes, yes, <laughs> but yes. it's, it's at the stage where, yeah, any country can put up a small sat right now. It can happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And there's a lot. I mean, the good thing here, it, it was being done by the university. So it means it's really preparing the new generation. Yeah. Uh, start thinking about those ways and it shows humble beginnings but you can grow to do big things you know uh, yeah in someone fact, would say would, would, would try and argue <laughs> elon musk uh, is still you know an african uh, because he was <laughs> raising the essay or stuff like but you know it, that doesn't limit actually he's inspiring a lot of africans to start thinking beyond just the normals you know uh, i want to say so. i'd have to look at a map but there is a West African nation that put up a small sat. It's a weather. They put up their own weather satellite. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. They put up their own weather satellite. That was either last year or the year before. Um, but I remember that because it was a really big deal over there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And once again, you know, this is something that you could operate. You know, with the technology, you could you could operate it from from your home office. With, yes, you know, yes. it, it totally can be done that way. It's all possible, you know, depending on what you're using it for. So that's it. That's very neat. So tell me one other thing. Uh, um, have there been any, any other or or new sci-fi Kenyan films? Uh, there are, you know, there's Chuma, obviously, by Faith, who uh, last year, I think, won Best uh, director for short film at your festival as well oh, as yeah, uh, famous fame yeah i'm talking famous, beyond, yes. beyond this beyond this beyond this uh well right now actually the film industry we are, we are noticing some uh, um well there's a lot of uh, uh pro production that is happening that is um uh very what can i say it's encouraging in terms of where we're heading uh, right. as far as that is concerned i've not seen new sci-fi as such uh but there's a lot of uh, production when it comes to action films, it, when it comes to uh, mystery films, when it comes to... Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot that is happening. There's actually a, a, a film that is expected, uh, I think, is it end of this month? Um, that is an action film that is, right. you can see a lot of uh, uh, right. in, uh, investment that has been done on it. And so this is what we are, we are hopeful, because I mean, you know, like Kitambo was mostly self, uh, sponsored. We came together, put whatever little uh, uh, money we had for in terms of independent film, and we put it out there. And so we are hopeful. And we went for us. We went through all the journey from just doing the film from pre-production to some level of distribution, putting it out uh, in cinemas, and um, so that we were learning in the process. And and so we are seeing that it's being picked up. There are a couple of films that are going to Netflix, Kenyan films as well. And so we are hopeful. We are hopeful that, um, um, and it's just a matter of time. Someone else will put out another uh, sci-fi. We're already in development, working on uh, on the feature film version of uh, Kitambo, the 20 uh, Sayari uh, 47, I one that I mentioned in the lecture when you watch it. And so yes. We, yes. we we want to do it right. And so we are taking time with it uh, so that eventually when, uh, when you put it out, it will be something, you know, worth. Uh, sure watching yeah yeah because you know um if you're able to produce a feature um, that's the best way to monetize your efforts yes you know yes. the shorts are great calling cards they're great for learning and, and presenting new ideas um yes. but it it just helps if you can you know uh, let it run let the camera run a couple more hours and grab grab some more scenes and you know if you're able to have a good story, you'll, you'll be able to get yourself a feature. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, of course, it's a lot, it's it's not as easy as doing a short, even though there's some shorts that I've seen that are extremely challenging. Yes. But uh, yes. it, it, you, you have a, a chance to monetize, monetize your efforts 
you know, with those. So I'm always looking forward to hearing my phone ring. Hey, we have a feature coming out next year. Yeah. Send it in. We want to see. <laughs> we yeah, have to. Yeah. We, we are hopeful that, uh, well, I think we have a lot of the story uh, right. to tell. And, um, and so we, even when we were looking at it with the famous as well, uh, Faith is, the, the plan is to, we are thinking, based on the story we have, that's just, the shortest it can be is a trilogy, if we can uh, get to do that. I mean, first you have to do the first feature, <laughs> then you get the second yes. and the third. Yes. But yeah, if you are to tell the story in full, it will be like a trilogy, uh, three yeah. films at least. Yeah. Um, and uh, because we're going into depths about certain right. stuff. And as I said, the concept itself is just to help uh, carry the whole story along and, uh, and to show how, um, you know, to reference something that um, they usually say in the Bible, you know, before there was a, when they're building the Tower of Babel, because the guys were united in what they were doing, then they were able to really go very fast to the point where they had to be stopped, you know, because <laughs> they were united. And so that's what you're saying, even with the film, uh, so long as you're united in doing something good, in doing something uh, right, yeah. then you can go very far, you know. Even when you're united to do something bad, you can go very far, but they, right. before they right. Right. doing right. something right. And and the only, only thing that is holding back a lot of African countries is that um, approach where you have a common vision and uh, you disregard all these things that then divide you you look at things that you know bring you together and you can be able to move fast and those that's the whole purpose of the concept uh how we use it yes it's segmented but everyone doing their best in their specific sectors and but with a common goal towards building better, right. better society. all right so uh i guess that was the uh the takeaway and uh you know, once again, Willis, we're really thrilled to have you, man. You know, you you're we're we're very surprised that you know, pretty much on the other side of the planet, <laughs> even even we're even below the equator on the other side of the planet, below the equator, you know, or on the equator, <laughs> yeah, on the actually that's right, it's yeah. on the equator, you know, yeah, Mount Kilimanjaro. So yes. um, wow, all the way from there, in the and beaming in, so that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Willis. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your probably, what, 4 o'clock in the morning over there? Yeah, 6. It's almost 6 now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, thanks. Uh, as we said, we're always uh, happy with uh, being part of the festival, working, yeah. uh, working with the team. Um, and uh, thanks for having us. Uh, last year, we participated not as, at least Famous was there, and we were watching. Yes. So very nice. I'm always very nice person happy to be part of the festival. Yeah, very nice, very, very yeah. nice person. Her, her fortunately work. or unfortunately, because of COVID, uh, uh, it has allowed us at least somehow to still be able to participate yeah. remotely, yeah. virtually. So thanks again for having us. Sounds good. Thank you again. See you soon. Yeah, All right. Cheers. Cheers. Bye for now. Bye. All right, folks. How was that? That was awesome. So you heard it from the from the horse's mouth there, that um, Katambo and has got uh, they've got momentum and uh, they're putting together a great story and their seven seven societies concept is is come together. It's it's a beautiful thing. If you enjoy what you hear, I ask you to definitely take a look at us. Just look at the description in the video here, and you'll see the link to our our uh, festival server. Where you can watch the watch the lecture. All right, thank you so much. See everybody again. We will have another. Actually, actually, we are bringing a world premiere to you right now. Um, you'll see it in just a couple minutes. A world premiere from In the Losha. In the Losha. That's coming up next.
This is Hugo Gernsback. Some of you may know him as this guy. My grandfather was a seer. I mean, he was able to predict the future. Some of the things he saw coming include Skype, interactive television. He prepared the ground for what was going to be a huge, huge cultural influence. Online dating, space mining, social networks. He didn't just start the first science fiction magazine. He started the first five science fiction magazines. Hoverboards, Superman, and spaceships with a familiar shape. They pretty much defined the pulp era. There was a kind of instinctive genius. It's instant, it's flashy, it's fast, it's colorful, and it's sexy as hell. Although some would call him the greatest nightmare of science fiction. It all starts with the idea that you can tell science through stories. And that's where wisdom comes from. Hugo Gernsback's really got lost to history. And it is a shame that he's been forgotten in that respect because he was trying to achieve something quite significant. We need Gernsback now to restore the public's faith, trust, and hope in science. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing In the Losha. Plants on cotton blade down there. I'm gonna have to cut it and retie the trap. I need the blade. Thank <laughs> you. 
a quem se cerno che dare na como fi tani uno I'm only human, constant and weak. Glass in my face, brighter than graceless. Sifting through letters. Cut on the paper Spinning my channel No one is this Oh, 
Wow. How'd you like that, folks? That was an awesome visual album. And you just watched Retail Space. The group is called Retail Space. Uh, Retail Space is... That's... Uh, Izzy and Jacob. Um, this is the album called In the Losha. And this was shot in a very beautiful part of Southwest Florida. It's a place called Boca Grande. And in my opinion, that area is the nicest part of South Florida. Have you ever heard of Sanibel? Fort Myers, Captiva, in particular, Sanibel and Captiva. Not very far from that, just north of it. Nice little chain of islands. Very beautiful, quiet, lazy, you know, quiet place in southwest Florida. And uh, you can tell they put a lot of work into the production of this visual album. The director is Judith Posey, or Pose. And uh, that, once again, that's Izzy and Jacob from Retail Space. And the album is called In the Losha. And we are thrilled that they sent this to us. Um, it is what I would describe as multidimensional. It was a multidimensional journey they were on. Thank you very much for that, guys. We really, really appreciate it. And we're going to probably play it again. All right. So with all that said, we are now going off into some more events back in the festival. So uh, there are two more sessions that you have to check out. And that is... Uh, Action Stations is still going on. Uh, Surfing in the Thunderdome is just now completing. That's our Afrofuturism session. And then after that is Adult Animation at 1120. For all the pass holders, we have a tailgate party starting very, very soon. See you guys on the other side. Remember, retail space in the Losha. Really good.